Just to kind of bounce this off, what do you guys think about targeting times of day with certain types of audio content? I think that that would be positive. I mean, I, I listen to NPR in the morning uh, while I'm getting ready for work. And they have like the morning edition that is the top stories and Absolutely. things of interest. You know, that might not necessarily be something I would listen to in the evening. So having different content play at different times, I can see that being very valuable. Well, this is just an illustration of some of the things that the New York Times has been doing. But I have much more experience with NPR where, absolutely, I'll listen to Morning Edition. But if you notice how their content changes throughout the day, you get your, your morning news summaries, then you'll get a late morning commentary. And then a lot of times there'll be kind of a local feature, a show for like two hours. But then you'll get some of the larger syndicated long form things like with Terry Gross and things like that. So I think that might be a model that local publishers could look at if they can get some analytics on what types of content. Maybe this can come from the notifications that people choose and things like that. And that might be another thing that we could implement on the site is so that notifications could be scheduled per time of day. So maybe you don't want to hear about obituaries in the morning, but you want to hear about the weather and traffic. And if those are categories that are available, you could prioritize those to come up as notifications at a certain point in the day and then have other notifications come a little later. When you're sitting down to dinner, you start getting a few notifications. Might be a, an interesting way of retargeting, as we've mentioned before. I think one thing to mention, Christopher, is that just to get started is important. That, that's number one. Just get started. And then the other two, the other thing is to remember that Readers are, to a certain extent, programmable, and consistency is key. So if you're going to start something like this and say you choose to put your audio up at 6 o'clock every morning or even just once a week at the same time, although I would recommend more frequently, um, do it consistently because your readers will eventually learn to expect it at that time. Very so true. even if you only do one topic a couple of times a week, be consistent about it and, and don't skip anything. Don't make excuses, just do it and be consistent and trust your readers. Give them as much control and let them tailor the experience to what they want. Right, but if they know that they can expect to get their audio, you know, Tuesday mornings at, at seven o'clock. Well, I think that builds they... upon the print model. People are used to have it to going out in the morning and going and picking up the paper in the yard. Right. Not so much anymore, but it builds upon that consistency, as you said, and that regularity where people get used to their local news outlet being a part of their daily routine. And exactly. I know that's what publishers want for exactly. their audiences. I couldn't have said it better. Perfect. Let's see. For one last bit, we will touch on video because even though one of the stats showed that a lot of audio works, and obviously video is a different medium. You can't commute with video. In your experience, where have you seen videos start to, to pop up most in the news space? We did a story on the BBC using Instagram last week. Are there any further thoughts on how some of our local publishers might be able to use video to bring more community engagement? Say, I think maybe we brought up uh, doing some TikTok clips from local sporting events and stuff like that, that would be a low hanging fruit that where a publisher already has a presence there covering the event, let them throw their phone out and get a little video content to go along. Right. I know one of our publishers does a Facebook Live weekly, and they actually have a segment, and it's different topics. But what I thought was really interesting is during election time, she actually had them come to her office and give their points of view for election. I, I thought that was wonderful to have a debate in a news office. We do have one publisher who incorporates their civic meetings into their content so that there's a live video or, or just a video of the proceedings that happened. Terry, exactly. let's, let's save that because that actually comes in part three of the coverage. So yeah. we will definitely come back to that on the usage of live events by news outlets to further engage with their community, get feedback and all of those uh, sorts of things. So we, we will definitely be covering that uh, in the future. So just to sum up, some of these big trends are audio based is the one we're focusing on today. And we've highlighted 
some of the features of our hometown and how we are helping our customers do that. And we've had a really amazing demo that I will link to. I just wanted to chime in where to get started for publishers. Uh, what I would possibly do is follow like your local news on TV. Your 6 a.m. is not going to be different than what you're going to have in the evening. You know, relevancy, consistency, as Perry said, you know, find out what your readers enjoy at certain times. You could do a survey, a poll, you know, get the community involved and that'll help you build your routine. I believe so, because what we want to do is make the consumption of local news content just a normal part of someone's life, not getting into Twitter flare debates or any of these kind of things. I, I think the trend this year, if I may just put in my own opinion, is a turn towards constructive journalism, a turn away from talking head debates on 24-hour news networks. I think we need to move into a place where we regain our sense of community and shared values. Solutions journalism. You don't report on things without offering solutions or a perspective. That's what people come to read newspapers for. You can get facts anywhere, but they want your local perspective of your reporters. That's why they buy a subscription to your newspaper. So I think we will cut it there for Today in News Tech, the weekly chat. And I just want to thank everybody for all your contributions. We miss Matt. We hope we will have him back next week. But he's been here in spirit and in chat. And Tyler, Vera, and Terry, thank you so much for all your support and your contributions. And we will see you next time. Thank you. Have a good week. Thank you. Today in News Tech, the podcast covering innovation in digital journalism. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe on YouTube or any of your favorite podcast apps. We'll see you tomorrow. At our hometown, we help newspapers build WordPress websites, design native apps, and develop digital subscription models. If you are interested in a free prototype of your publication on WordPress, go to ourhometown.com and click the Contact Us button.